confirmation of quorum, I am going to call the June 10th, 2020 meeting to order. Uh, okay, I can, can I get somebody to please move the adoption? Move. move. Thank you. Please make sure you're doing that in chat. Moved by Director Wally, seconded by Director Colburn. Thank you very much. Um, Madam you, Chair, it's Brenda. I have yeah. one item that I'd like to just a really quick announcement, either under new business or I could do it right now. Okay, no, under the, new business, please, Director Lee. Okay. 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 Thank you. Is there any other additions to today's public agenda? Yes, Chair. Dr. I have Dr. a Kerr. Okay, so you have a subsequent, Director Kerr. We'll we'll move the agenda first, and then I'll do your subsequent. Thank you. Okay, seeing no yep. other additions to the agenda, I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I will call that carried as amended. Uh, to Director Kerr, please. Thank you, Chair. And I have a motion here. I think uh, staff, I sent it to staff, so I believe they have it too. Um, motion reads that a representative of the Ripple Rock Estates be invited to join the board's meeting to answer any questions that may arise during consideration of the development referral from the city of Campbell River. Okay, in order for discussion, if I can get a second. Seconded by Director Unger, thank you very much. Uh, Director Kerr. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, the, the representative from uh, Ripple Rock Estates has requested the ability to join the meeting to answer any questions that may come up. Uh, during consideration of, and this is referring to um, M7 on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion regarding the motion that's on the floor? Director Moglo. Thanks. My question is, are you talking about for today that they be a representative be invited to join today? Yes, to answer questions should a director have a question, but not to participate in the discussion. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, Director Colburn. Hi there, folks. I'm just curious through the chair how that would work. It does, does staff have the ability to let someone come on and then kick them off necessarily? That's not the right terminology, but to let them participate just for that sole piece? and then um, and invite them, or I just wondering process-wise how that works. And I know that you said that, Chair, that you were going to discuss that in your uh, report, but as this is a, a motion here, I'd like to hear a little more about that. Certainly, thank you. To staff, please. Uh, simple answer is yes. What we'll do is we'll, if the board passes this motion, we'll send a uh, team's invite to the individual and when we're done with the report, we will just um, uh, remove them from the meeting. Okay, thank you. Director Anderson. Uh, my question thank is the you. same. I'm really glad to know that we have the procedural capacity to receive delegations and applicants and, uh, and people. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Moglov. Thanks. So I'm just really not sure why we would need somebody to, from Ripple Rock to answer questions when the issue before the board is uh, fairly technical, i.e. getting uh, advice from a MOTI, uh, a traffic impact study, and getting approval for uh, the proposed sanitary sewer and water systems, all three of which have to happen anyway. So I don't understand why having a, a representative, why that would be necessary. Okay. So um, I'll let perhaps Director either Kerr staff can answer that. that or the chair or somebody, please. Director Kerr can answer that. It's his motion. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, it's it's just a request. If there, I mean, like you say, it may be straightforward, and there's absolutely nothing. Just just an opportunity to answer any questions should they arise. Uh, not involved in any discussion. Just there on hold. If there was a question by uh, the directors that needed answering. Okay. Thank you. 
I have no other comment. So Madam I'm Chair, uh, it's Brenda Lee. Um, I would just like to comment that I think it's too soon to uh, invite a delegation in on this because as Director Moklov said, this is going out for referral to MOTI. And when the MOTI uh, responds back, we will have more to discuss. But right now it's a, too preliminary to because it's going to other agencies other than us. And and properly, they should be a delegation. They shouldn't be allowed to you know, join the meeting, sit at the board table, um, intercept any decisions the board's making, but they they should be invited to appear as a delegation maybe at the next meeting or at the meeting where we get the responses from MOTI if we pass the referral motion. Am I clear or not? Somebody's frozen. Mm -hmm. I could hear you, Brenda. The chair appears to be this. Yeah, the chair is frozen. Oh, now I'm back. Sorry about okay. that. Director Moglov. Thanks. And I agree with Director Lee. I think it's premature. I think what's before the board today is a pretty straightforward referral to agencies that have to be contacted in any event. I, I took liberty of checking with our city staff and yeah, that this is the normal course of events. And so I think it's premature. Okay, thank you. Um, seeing no other speakers, I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Lee? Moglov. Director yeah. Wally is opposed. Director Moglov is opposed. Director Unger is opposed. Director and Colburn, one, two, three, four. Director Lee is opposed. Director That's... McKenzie was opposed. I'm sorry? Director McKenzie was opposed to. He's... Director McKenzie was opposed. OK, so I believe that is defeated unless staff can tell me something different. I'm not four. sure I would concur. OK, thank you. So the motion is defeated. Um, we will not be inviting the participant in at this point. Thank you very much for the discussion. Um, can I please, we are done the agenda. Can I get somebody to please move the adoption of the minutes from May 27th? Thank you, Director Lee, second by Director Unger. Thank you. Is there any errors or omissions with those minutes? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, Director Anderson, business. Oh, you have business rising. So um, thank you. I will call that carried to Director Anderson, please, from business arising for minute. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to let the board know that I've had a lot of communication from my constituents and the media with regards to the regional district's decision to delay all public hearings until the fall, specifically with regards to the, the Cortez seniors application. Um, and just so the board knows, the kind of comments that I've been getting is, you know, kids are in schools, restaurants are opening, uh, there's no COVID outside the lower mainland in a long time, as last I heard, and yet we can't conduct public hearings that really adversely affect Cortez, but certainly the whole regional district board um, processes. And so, there's been four newspaper articles on this, which is pretty rare and outstanding. Um, so I just offer that this is a moment for reconsideration if any of my rural colleagues wanted to so move so that business could carry on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other business arising for minutes? Yes, I have one item. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted to advise the board that there is a development permit application for Stonefly Creek in Area D that came to the board in May under SRD. Is it rising from last minutes last um, minute. Yeah, really? I sent. Uh, oh, no, it's in the minutes actually. From the last meetings. Oh. Yeah, business arising from minutes. So Jeff Fermento has a development permit in play in Area D. And he was trying to get it underway. The board has seen the application before in May, but it got referred out to the fisheries and to the Area D APC. And for the past month, uh, we've been trying to 
communicate with those agencies and they're not meeting in June. So um, I talked to planning and they suggested that we try because Mr. Fermento is anxious to get underway. Um, so I I talked to planning and Anico suggested that we can get all the paperwork that you already saw once back to the board on June 24th for the board's approval. If we and in the meantime, we'll keep trying to get hold of fisheries and get get the referral advice, but we're having really big problems due to COVID. The offices were not manned at fisheries and it's calling people on their cell phones and things. I can't track people down to do the work. Okay, thank you very much for that update. Is there any other business arising from last meeting's minutes? Seeing none, I'll move forward. I have no public considerations at this time. Uh, notice of motion. Um, Director Davis, are you on the line? I know that you had uh, contacted me yeah. to notice a motion. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I had some technical yes. issues. Yes, yes Yeah, thank you. I yes, wanted, thank you. sorry, I wanted to bring forward a notice of motion um, re regarding, uh, com I'd like to see a comparative analysis of key staff remuneration between other local regional districts and those with similar population bases in BC. So that's something I'd like to bring forward for the next meeting. Thank you, and I'll get you to work with staff. Um, so that they can provide you with a report that fits with everything that you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to my chair's report for today. I'm just wanting to, uh, number one, send our best wishes out to Director Abram, who has taken a bit of a turn for the worse and uh, was sent down to Victoria and had surgery on Monday. It's my understanding that he came through that surgery very well and uh, he's been able to fix that up. And uh, hopefully we will see him back within the next, either the next meeting or the meeting after, um, feeling a bit better and not in as much jeopardy of losing any motion uh, from his fall and his, uh, his broken back. So we wish him the best. Um, secondly, I just want to have a quick uh, update on what we're looking at for procedures today. Because we have um, invited MNP into the meeting, and because Teams meetings doesn't differentiate between the meetings as we do moving forward into in-camera or restricted in-camera and can still participate um, on a chat level, what we will be doing um, as a pilot today is totally terminating the public meeting. You will be sent a request through ED partway through. Do not click on it at that point. Um, and then we will go into a completely different in-camera meeting. And then we will terminate that and go into a restricted in-camera meeting. And that's the only way we can do that and allow that public participation um, where they do not have access into the restricted or the um, or the in-camera meetings going forward. So um we are going to try our best ed is going to get those um, into your calendars in your team's meeting at the end of this meeting when we terminate i will call that all the rest of our business is moving in camera under which sections and then i'll call for termination and then ed will be kicking you all out of the meeting and you are going to have to re-sign in under the new one that is in your calendars um, also today, um, quickly with the MMP, there is option under C to move into a confidential um, form in camera if we wish to talk to MNP without staff. If we choose to exercise that option, they will be, we will um, defer the rest of those and that will happen in our in-camera portion. We'll move that and they will be on standby and go into the in-camera portion and anything after that we will deal with at the June 24th meeting if we choose to exercise the option to speak to them um, if we need to uh, and I'll leave that up to directors. I do, uh, that is all that I really have from my chair's report and I do have a question from Director Anderson. Thank you for that, Madam Chair. So just for procedural clarity, I'm understanding the MMP um, has the ability then to 
stay with us for the whole open portion of the meeting. I mean, they probably won't because why would they? But from a technical capacity, is that correct? Uh, well, we have the ability to see who is participating and ask them to leave and somebody is monitoring that. But uh, we have noticed through the team's uh, stuff that they are still able to see a lot of the chat. So that's why we will totally conclude and terminate the public meeting and go into a full new meeting in camera. And then because there is staff uh, members that shouldn't be involved in the restricted in camera, we will be totally terminating the in camera portion and we'll be restarting in a restricted in camera. So uh, that's the only way we're going to be able to do this and facilitate being able to have delegations come to the board. So this is something we're going to try today. Hopefully all directors can, can figure out how to do that so they're in the correct meeting. Um, and hopefully we can pull that off so that we do have the ability to invite delegations into our meetings. And um, that's all I have for my chair's report today. If somebody could move my verbal. Madam report. Chair, before you move on, it's Brenda Lee. I have a yep. question about what you've just said. Yeah. Um, so I've never used the calendar. I. I don't I don't use the calendar. Uh, usually Edie sends an email and I just I just join on a link that she sends on the email. Can she just send me an email? Yep, you'll all get an email in it and uh, it can populate your calendar or not. It doesn't matter, but she will be sending it out part way. Okay. Through. That's easy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is so it's been moved by Director Colburn, seconded by Director Adams. Is there any other questions regarding my report? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. Thank you very much. On to, uh, I have no consent calendar, committee chair reports, none, no extra territorial reports. On to M staff reports. Uh, if I can get somebody to move this financial statements and auditing report findings. Moved by Director Lee, seconded by Director Unger, thank you very much. And to Madam staff. Chair, Madam Chair, if I may, I think you missed A in the. I'm asking for receipt. That's what I asked to be moved. Receipt from the CAO. Thank you. All right, to staff, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think Corey from MNP is on with us and he is up to present. Thank you. Welcome, Corey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you to the directors for having me here. I, I do appreciate uh, that the, the technical hurdles can be, uh, there's lots to go through, so um, I hope this goes well. Um, I do have a presentation, so if you bear with me, I'm going to share, make sure I share the right screen. And you should be able to see the first slide of my presentation. Um, now, uh, just a, a point of housekeeping. I can only see the chair. I can't see anybody else. I can also no longer see the chat uh, yes. while I'm giving the presentation. Um, so um, I will ask for your patience. I will uh, work through the presentation here, and then I'm happy to take questions at the end, and we can always move back uh, if we need to. Uh, so. We're all wrapped up uh, on the audit for another year. Um, I, I just want to really start by thanking staff um, uh, at all levels in the organization. Um, definitely a challenging year um, on many levels. Uh, you know, we, we did a, a, a remote audit where we weren't actually on site due to uh, you know the, the restrictions of COVID and things like that. So um, they were very good, very patient um, at working through the process. Um, and, and getting to the point where we have financials for you here today. So I'm going to take you through some, some highlights, um, uh, a little bit of discussion around the audit process, um, and then a little bit of analysis at the end. So starting with your financials. So again, these are your financial statements. Staff prepares them. Um, we're just checking them. Uh, this is a, a look at the balance sheet at the end of December 2019. And you can see at a, at a very high level, cash and cash equivalents, investments and things of just over 21 million. When we add in the receivables and, and other ass, financial assets, you get $35.7 million uh, at the end of the year. 
The regional districts portion of the debt that's on your books is 2.2 million. Uh, the when we add in the accounts mm -hmm. payable and the other member municipality debt uh, amounts, the total liabilities are 19.2 million. So if you take the 35 million of total financial assets, subtract off the 19 of liabilities, you get what we call the net financial asset position of 16.4 million. So it's a positive um, position to be in there, um, having net financial assets as opposed to net debt. And then the tangible capital assets, so that the physical assets, buildings, equipment, um, things like that, uh, of 23.6 million at the end of the year. And the final number there at the bottom is the accumulated surplus of 40 million, most of that being the physical assets, but I will get into a, a, in a future slide the breakdown of, of that $40 million number. Moving then to the income statement or the statement of operations, so what, um, what happened throughout 2019. We see total revenue is just over $21 million. Compared to the 16 in the prior year, there's a significant increase there in, in grant funding, um, both coming from gas taxes, um, from the, the energy recovery project and the building renovation project, so the grant funding for that, and some other cattle projects. So that's the biggest um, reason for that increase in revenue there. On an expense basis, um, it's only up about 8% from the prior year, 13.7 uh, to 14.8, just about. Um, and that's coming in a variety of areas. Uh, there's no one major expense increase that accounts for that, that 8%. Um, on an accounting basis, the annual surplus then for 2019 is uh, just shy of 6.5 million, up from the 2.5 in the prior year. The one caution I will give you is that the grants for capital projects are showing up in that revenue number. Um, however, the capital spending doesn't show in that expense line. Um, the accounting standards have us put it on the balance sheet. So what that generates is a large surplus number even though there is those grants were spent. So it's a little bit more um, valuable to look at the cash flows and, and what actually happened there. So we'll look at that in, in, uh, in a future slide. The breakdown of, of your revenue sources, you can see here when we look at 2018 on the right and 2019 on the left, property taxes is still the, the, the main source of uh, funds. And, but you can see that big increase in grants from 18 to 19, just shy of $6 million in grant funding. Um, for some of those capital projects. On the expenses side, not a lot of movement in terms of the mix here. The, the biggest uh, category, of course, the parks, recreation and culture, then the general government, uh, and then usually the, the environmental health side. So the mix is fairly consistent year over year on an expense basis. Promised I would talk about cash flows. So when we've got $6.2 million of cash flows provided from the operations, that's all the, the taxes, the user fees, the grants coming in. There's that capital purchases number that isn't in the expenses um, on the income statement of 5.1 million. What's in there is that the building renovations, um, some other senior projects, the QCO pump station, Cottage Community Center seismic upgrades, uh, the QCO Village Trail. Those are some of the, the bigger ticket items in that $5.1 million. And then a, a net $76,000 of payment on debt for the year. So you get a positive cash inflow to the general bank account of $982,000, um, which is, gives you a little bit better sense of, of the activity level for the year because it factors in that $5 million of, of capital asset purchases. I think the last slide here for the financial statements and, and the look back at 2019 is this $40 million accumulated surplus number and what is it? We see there's $21 million tied up in the capital assets. So that's the value of the assets, the historic cost um, minus any depreciation. And then we take the debt, uh, associated debt uh, out of there. There's $14.2 million set aside in reserves for future projects. There's a small amount of capital funding available, 97,000 appropriated equity of 1.8 so again also set aside for future projects and and um, um, future expenditures of the regional district and then unappropriated equity of 2.5 million dollars i'm going to switch gears now and take you out of the financial statements and into our audit and our audit process um, the first bullet there unqualified opinion that is auditor speak for a clean audit opinion we are satisfied that the financial statements that you have in front of you 
um, are free of material misstatement and have been prepared in accordance with the appropriate um, public sector accounting standards for local governments. So we're ready to sign off. We've got all the paperwork, all the documentation in. The last step is, is the uh, approval here today by the Board of Directors. Our audit process, we look at the controls at the, at the regional district. We look at how they're designed, uh, how they're implemented. We don't necessarily test effectiveness. It's a more efficient audit approach for us to sample transactions throughout the year to form our opinion. Uh, so again, because we're sampling, we're not looking at every transaction. Uh, and the way we the way we drive our work then is this second bullet of materiality. So materiality is calculated as a percentage of your annual revenue. Um, this is about 3.3% of uh, the region district's annual revenue for 2019. And what that means is that we look at every transaction over $750,000. So most of those are happening in the capital side. Uh, and then underneath that, we sample um, in the revenue and expenses and payroll and things like that to give ourselves comfort uh, that, that the, your financial statements are um, accurately represented. So there's no limitations placed on the performance of our audit. We had uh, access to all the documents we wanted to see, people we wanted to talk to. And uh, again, thank you to staff for, the, for their time and effort this year. We didn't find any irregularities in, in financial statements, no evidence of conflict of interest or unusual transactions. We, in the context of a financial statement audit, we are not specifically um, forensic investigators or fraud investigators, but if anything came to our attention, we will be required to report it out um, to the board, um, most likely in an in-camera session instead of in an open session. But uh, nothing to bring to your attention uh, for 2019, so that's a good news item. Uh, again, a thank you to staff, uh, Mike and David and the rest of the finance team and uh, really staff all across the organization. Uh, we're not just in talking to the finance team, we're, at, we're talking with the other departments as well. Um, an unusual year and uh, lots of assistance provided this year to, to get the financials uh, to the uh, good shape that they're in and to uh, give the audit out the door. Um, Finally, the last thing on the auditor side of, uh, of the presentation is we do confirm our independence. Um, we didn't do any other projects or any other work this year that would impair our ability to give you an independent um, audit opinion. Thank you very much, Mr. Vanderhorst. Oh, oh you got more? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got about uh, three slides and then I'll wrap okay, up. Sorry. Uh, I will probably, yeah. Uh, so um, the last, um, last three slides I want to look at are, are looking at some trends. So the the first few slides, we're just looking at 2019 and that snapshot of one year. We like to then look at a uh, uh, longer time, look at the last five years and where are things trending with your finances. So we start looking at this financial assets to liabilities ratio. And this one, we're looking at it, whether you're over or under this magic number of one. If you are over one, you have funds available to pay for future projects. If you are less than uh, one to one, you are taxing or um, having user fees to pay for past transactions. So this ratio is is positive. It's 1.85. It is above one, but it has been trending downward for the last five years um, as more capital projects happen um, and as you take care of that infrastructure. So that is something to keep an eye on there that um, it, it is moving in that direction. The flip side of that is a lot of that, uh, those funds are going into capital projects. So this uh, ratio looks at flexibility, the the rough age of the assets. It is not a full asset management look. It doesn't talk about uh, condition assessments or time to replacement. But what we see here is roughly the age of your assets is getting younger. So it was the carrying value was about 52% of original cost in 2016. It's up to 57. That's a reflection of an increased capital spending on some of those big projects over the last few years. The final one that we have here is uh, vulnerability. So the, looking at your federal, provincial government transfers, comparing that to your other sources of revenue and seeing uh, how much funding is coming in from those other places. As I would expect to see with a big capital year, we see a, a large percentage here of 25% uh, of your revenues for 2019 was capital project grants. That's normal, that's nothing to be concerned about. It, it means you're finding those grants to be able to get those capital projects done. So I will wrap up the presentation there and I will uh, return. 
uh, or stop presenting, so you should have control back now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So um, just for just for procedure here before we start asking any questions, I'm just going to call the question on receipt of the CAO's report. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that question that carried. Um, I'm just going to call uh, for a mover and a seconder for B, which is to get Mr. Vanderhorst to do the presentation. Moved by Director Colburn. Seconded by Director Adams. Thank you very much. And because it's already done, I'm just going to call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. Um, and I just would like to open the floor for uh, questions to Mr. Vanderhorst at this particular time. Madam Chair, Director Lee. Thank you. Director um, Lee. Thanks for your presentation, Corey. And I just wanted to ask if there are projects that have been financed in previous years that have been incomplete uh, for more than a couple years, how do you account for those monies? I have a couple projects that are worth over six hundred thousand dollars, and they're not being at. They, as far as I know, they're not in progress. So, how do you account for? Uh, prior years financing uh, for projects that aren't being done. Thank you, Director Lee. Good question. Yes, so one of the steps that we do in all of our audits is to look through those incomplete projects. We call them work in, work in progress um, and have a discussion with staff of is this project ongoing? Is this project abandoned uh, or, or shelved? Um, and any of those projects where they're, they are still alive, there is movement or activity and there's no clear decision on on canceling the project, um, those uh, preliminary costs, design studies, things like that, will be sitting in your capital assets on the balance sheet. Um, as we go through those conversations, if if there's a determination that any of those projects are not moving forward, um, then uh, we we would uh, or staff would uh, effectively write off those costs, expense them in that year. Uh, when the decision is made to discontinue the project. So if you have, uh, I think you said about 600,000 of projects on the go that are not formally canceled, they would be sitting on the balance sheet still in that capital assets number. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Is there any other questions for Mr. Vanderhorst? Well, a uh, follow up to the last answer. So if a project was canceled and not completed after a few years, um, does the money go back into the account it came from? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, so we have moved, seconded, and voted on Mr. Vanderhorst's presentation already. Uh, it is up to the board now if they wish to have a discussion with Mr. Vanderhorst in camera uh, with just the board. Uh, that is uh, C optional. If somebody wishes to do that, I'll entertain that right now. If not, we are going to move on to part D. Seeing no uptake to move in camera, uh, I have uh, part D, which is that the Strathcona Regional District audited consolidated financial statements for this year ended December 31st, 2019, be approved. That is being moved by Director Adams, seconded by Director Colburn. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Vanderhorst. Thank you. Thank you, you for joining us today. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, on to number two, which is the Quadra Links right of way agreement. So uh, I need somebody to move the report from the CAO, please. So move. Director Thank you, Dan. Director. I'm sorry, was that Dan? Yeah. Thank you. And seconded by Director Lee. And to staff, please. Uh, nothing, Dad, Madam Chair. Just want to also confirm for the board that uh, the staff from MMT have left the meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, so any other discussion on the CIO's report? 
Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call receipt carried. On to part B, if somebody could move part B. Thank you, Director Adams, seconded by Director Colburn. This is a weighted vote, and that is that the chair and corporate officer be authorized to execute the proposed right of way agreements over part A, part of lot A, district lots 122 and 154 and say we're district plan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. On to number three, which is the Quadra Island Walkway and Sewer Right-of-Way, 638 Green Road. If I can get somebody to move a re receipt of report. Dan. Dan, thank you. Moved, seconded by Director Kerr. Thank you very much. And is there to staff? Uh, nothing to add, Madam Chair, but if I can add a technical comment here, because uh, I've seen it in chat. If you are finding you cannot participate in chat, you have likely joined an, another meeting. If that's happened, leave the meeting and join the okay. 1230 meeting for today. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion on the CAO's receipt or report? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, that is carried on to part B that the chair and corporate officer be authorized to execute the proposed walkway and sewer right of way uh, agreements over lot one of district 134, dis say we're district plan. Moved by Director Lee, seconded by Director Wally. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. On to number four, which is the Agricultural Land Reserve Application, ALRD 1D20, Raven Industries. Uh, if I can get somebody to move receipt, I have Director Wally, seconded by Director Lee. Thank you very much. And to staff for comment, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The SRD has received an application from the Agricultural Land Commission for a non-farm use application. This application is to permit the restoration of an existing gravel pit in Oyster River, currently owned by Raven Industries, uh, which has been in use for over 10 years. The purpose is to uh, restore a six hectare portion of the 656 hectare area um, to allow for uh, evening of the ground and potential agricultural capabilities uh, to allow for grazing and crop use. Uh, the Agricultural Land Commission requires uh, the SRD to authorize the application to proceed to the Agricultural Land Commission for consideration. Uh, given the report provided uh, as Part of the application, uh, the restorations operations report from the RP bio, which provides steps to be taken to prepare for the restoration. Uh, it is recommended that we allow the application to proceed to the ALC with a recommendation that it only be approved if the commission determines that the proposal has the potential to improve the agricultural uh, potential of the lands. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Director Lee, this is in my area. I'd like to know, um, since it's at the end of Glenmore Road and we just completed a $450,000 dike project down there that Wacor did, uh, Wacor and McElhaney together, would this um, project for the six hectares um, have any impact on the uh, the dam that we've just re we've just worked on, because I know I know Mike Oviet Trucking was uh, doing a lot of the dam work, the the dirt work, uh, hauling hauling fill in there and stuff to reinforce the dam prior to the big contract going out to Wacor, and so now I'm just wondering if this six hectares is going to change the flow, change the situation for the dam? 
OK, thank you to staff. Thank you, Madam Chair, to Director Lee. Uh, this portion of this application is uh, not to impact uh, the existing agreement we have uh, with both Ravenlands and Mike Oviet. The work to take place is happening in conjunction with Raven and uh, Mike Oviet, and it's a very small portion of the overall lands. Is it anywhere near the dam, though? That's what I'm asking. Uh, no. Okay. okay. Thank you. So on receipt of the CAO report, is there any other comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed to receipt? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. On to part B, that the Agricultural Land Reserve Application ALR ID 20 be authorized to proceed to the Agricultural Land Commission for consideration of the proposed non-farm use. Moved by Director Lee, seconded by Director Colburn. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. And on to part C, that the board recommend that the application be approved only if the Agricultural Land Commission determines that the proposal has the potential to improve agricultural potential of the lands under application. Uh, moved by Director Wally, seconded by Director Kerr. Thank you very much. And is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. Thank you. Moving on to number five, which is liquor licenses temporary expansion request. Uh, the receipt of the CAO moved by Director Wally, seconded by Director Colburn. Thank you very much. And uh, I will go to Mr. Yates for some comment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the report in front of the board today basically is to uh, advise the board that the Liquor Control and Cannabis Regulation Branch has issued a bulletin to all of the uh, liquor licensees advising that they may start to come out of their shutdown, uh, provided that they meet certain uh, requirements regarding physical distancing, and uh, that it is up to them to get approval from their local government before they can do that. And so rather than deal with potentially dozens of uh, applications, we've received se several already, uh, recommending that the board issue a blanket uh, approval, um, which the board can do under the regulation. And if that's acceptable, uh, otherwise we will start to, to bring them back individually for the board's consideration. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion on receipt? Director Wally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, one of those applicants uh, is from Sayward here, and their intent is to increase the uh, size of their premises that allows liquor distribution so that they can uh, put in place the social distancing. So I'm very much in favor of this. Thank you very much. Uh, Director Anderson. Thank you. In concurrence with Director Wally, I think that uh, we should be supporting our businesses in any which way possible and not requiring any further delays. So I think this is a great approach. Thank you, staff. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wish for discussion on receipt? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. On to part B, uh, that the board give its approval for liquor licenses with the regional within the regional district jurisdiction to temporarily expand their service area to meet physical distancing guidelines in accordance with the requirements of the liquor and cannabis regulation branch subject to compliance with all other legal re uh, requirements. That is moved by Director Unger, seconded by Director Anderson. Or, thank you very much. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. On to number six, which is the Regional District Service Restoration Plan. 
Uh, thank you, Director Wally, for receipt, moving receipt from the CAO. And second by Director Lee, thank you. And to staff, please, Direct, uh, Mr. Leach. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as uh, we have uh, brought to the board's attention, the province has uh, encouraged local governments to um, have a procedure and policies plan for opening up um, that follow the guidelines, this, the four steps that the, the province has outlined. We are in um, phase two of that opening plan. And once again, the province is encouraged to bring service levels, look at them at about a 60% level for the next 12 months. Um, it's also recommended through legal counsel that uh, this policy and procedures should be endorsed by the board. It's my understanding that the local governments in our area, Campbell River, Comox and Courtney, will be bringing their policies and procedures to their boards and councils uh, this week as well, the next uh, five to seven days. Um, uh, with that, um, again, we've included the steps to follow the, the four phases of the restoration plan in here. We are in phase two. Um, these policies then um, at a high level with staff is um, supported through is WorkSafe BC in um, coming up with the actual in the weeds plans, if you will, the details of how social distancing will be done, how interactions within the office, the board members, uh, members of the public interacting in the building in our different facilities, the trails, how we will roll those out. So um, WorkSafe has not required us to have every single plan um, mapped out, but that we are working on it. So uh, we have a number of them that we are ready to roll out and we continue to work on the remainder of the, the WorkSafe plans. And as the province progresses through the next two phases, as you can see in the report, that will expand the, uh, the services that the regional district has to offer. So um, having said that, I'm uh, open to any questions of the board. Hey, is there anybody that has any questions regarding the restoration plan? Uh, Director Lee, um, hey. we have already uh, reopened the parks, the community parks and skateboard parks and recreation centers, not recreation centers, uh, our, our outdoor facilities. Um, but I was at, at Hegel and I noticed there's still caution tape around the swing sets and I just don't know why some of the equipment is uh, restored already and some is not. Well, again, uh, I think uh, following the advice of the province is that they would like, uh, it's not mandatory, but they certainly encourage that all local governments, uh, councils and boards support a restoration plan. So uh, there were some things in there that um, a number of local governments, i.e. parks and trails had opened up. But I think once the adoption of these uh, policies <laughs> and this restart program by local governments, you'll see that stuff begin to be removed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have Director Mogulov, please. Thank you. Um, I had an opportunity to take a look at the Strathcona Gardens Commission agenda, and there is a recreation restart plan on that agenda. Is that one element of this um, restoration plan? Yeah, it is. So, okay. uh, Strathcona Great. Gardens. I, I just want to say I just thought it was like an excellent report. I just it, it was very well, you know, um, well, well thought out and just really easy to read and easy to understand. And I just thought it went through everything in, in just a very, really, really good comprehensive way. And even though I'm not on the Gardens Commission, I just thought, wow, that's I, I really appreciated that report. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussions on receipt? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I'll call that carried. On to part B, that the policy CP025 restoration plan be approved. Moved by Director Lee, seconded by Director Unger. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing no other discussion, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I will call that carried. On to number seven, the City of Campbell River Development proposed referral, Ripple Rock Estates. Uh, move receipt by Director Kerr, seconded by Director Colburn. Thank you very much. And I will go to 
Uh, Ms. Nelson, please. First staff report. Thank you, Madam Chair to the board. The SRD has received an application from the city of Campbell River for a proposed 193 residential resort community, which is west of Race Point Road, which is the SRD's uh, existing subdivision um, accessed off of Race Point Road uh, in uh, the SRD lands uh, and under the SRD's jurisdiction fully. The proposal from the Ripple Rock Estates uh, includes approximately 85 hectares of land uh, to be developed for residential use and including approximately 20% um, park lands and trail systems and some environmental setbacks um, to protect both the foreshore uh, existing watercourses and some eagle uh, nest trees. Uh, the potential or the proposal includes um, constructing trails which will um, access uh, the existing Race Point Road uh, subdivision in the near future. Uh, the proposal includes both uh, a community water system and a community sewer system uh, access uh, via Race Point Road as, as the main um, arterial to the development. Uh, there has been a number of supporting documentation and studies done uh, as part of the application and uh, received as part of the referral. Uh, SRD staff applauds uh, a number of, of works that have been done uh, in conjunction with this um, and respects uh, the quality of work to date. Uh, there are, however, some questions uh, remaining as part of the application um, and we would like to see additional information uh, pertaining to specifically uh, uh, the Race Point Road being the primary access and the Ministry of Transportation's um, support for or against that um, and you know any necessary improvements uh, to that road system given you know probably about 300 additional vehicles uh, accessing off of that road uh, once the development um, has been um, fully developed um, and constructed. Uh, we would also like to have uh, information from senior levels of government uh, related to uh, water flows uh, and uh, the sewage system prior to um, providing additional support for the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So on receipt, I have Director Wally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one uh, question of staff there. Have they considered if there'd be any impact on drainage to our subdivision that already exists there when uh, they clear all this land and do whatever improvements they do? Yeah, that is one question. I uh, believe that will be taken care of as part of um, the overall application and subdivision. Uh, however, that information at this point has not been received. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there Hello. any other discussion on receipt? Yes, Director oh. Lee. Um, I don't quite understand if this land is fully within the Strathcona Regional District and it's a land use issue for Area A. Why we're getting a referral from the District of Campbell River when it's not Campbell River's jurisdiction. Like they don't have control of that land now. So why, why is the applicant Ripple Rock Rock Estates not coming through to the planning department and making application to the SRD for what they want to do. Okay. Uh, why yeah. did why are they going through the city of Campbell River to do this? M Madam Chair, my apologies. Yeah. The the land in question is fully within the city of Campbell River's uh, okay. jurisdiction. However, oh, I thought Yes, yeah. sorry. So um, what I was trying to uh, advise as part of uh, my overview was that all access to the lands currently proposed would be fully within the SRD's jurisdiction as Ripple Rock Road is fully within uh, the SRD's boundary. OK, I got it. Thank you. I heard I heard you wrong. Yes. Yeah. Director Mogla, please. No, that's what I was going to say. I was going to clarify it is within the city. OK, thank you. So is there any other discussions on receipt? Okay, I'm going to call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. I am going to go to Director Adams, who um, sent in prior uh, an alternate motion. So to Director Adams, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I have an, um, an amended uh, motion for B that I had uh, sent, and uh, uh, Edith, has just, uh, Edith has just put it up. Um, and this is just 
Um, knowing that this is going, well, I'll, I'll move the motion first, and it's that the city of Cam River be advised that these SRD supports in principle the proposal pending advice received from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure regarding the primary access route. A subsequent traffic impact study is submitted and the development receives preliminary senior government approval for the proposed community sanity, sanitary sewer and water systems. Okay, if I can get a seconder for discussion, please. Seconded, Director Kerr, thank you very much. And to you, back to you, Director Adams. Thank you. Um, this is just a minor change. Uh, if, if, uh, as, if it was as the, proposed, the original motion, it would have uh, meant that we would have had to reintroduce this. What this does is uh, provide support and principle, knowing that this has got a lot of hoops to go through this is about the fourth reiteration of this that I've seen in the last two decades for this property. Um, and uh, obviously it has to go through Ministry of Transportation for the access to the highways. There's significant infrastructure to be considered. All of that will be done, uh, but if it meets all of the various provincial ministry uh, approvals, then if we're doing a subject uh, approval subject to uh, uh, subject to, then it just makes it easier for us uh, down the road. Thank you very much. So I do have some comments on the uh, motion. <laughs> Director Moglov. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I agree with uh, Director Adams. Unless staff can tell me that uh, it ties our hands in any way, I think it just si simply streamlines the process. It's so it's uh, approval in principle, subject to the re referrals that are refer that are mentioned in the report. <laughs> And as I said earlier, I have confirmed with city staff, that these would be done in any event. Um, and it just sort of makes it so that this can go move more, more expeditiously once, assuming the um, uh, the advice from Moti and the, the preliminary approval for sanitary sewer and water comes in in a positive manner. So I, I do support this. Thank you, uh, Director Anderson. Um, thank you. I suppose question through to the mover, uh, Director Adams. I'm just not clear, perhaps to staff, I'm not clear really of the implications of the difference between the motion presented and the motion uh, presented by staff. I understand that one is uh, support in principle and the one that staff recommended was, you know, cannot support until. Um, but in terms of how this either streamlines or inhibits the process going forward, I'm, un I'm unclear and I would love, love clarity perhaps from staff or the city um, because I you know, I don't know anything more about this proposal than what we have in front of us, and I don't feel like I can support in principle until we have more information. Um, but I would like to know how one versus the other um, affects the process going forward. Thank you. Okay, Director Adams, did you want to take that or would you like me to move to staff? Well, I think uh, Director Anderson answered her own question with the last statement and that uh, um, this is support in principle pending uh, the response from the various agencies that uh, will be consulted. Uh, that's exactly what it what it means. OK, thank you. And I am I am being told by staff that they are actually fine with the motion <laughs> in any way. And I have Director Wally. So, so just for clarity, Madam Chair, does that mean that Director Adam is saying that that it wouldn't need to come back to the board again if the referrals came in positive as opposed to cannot support would need to come back to the board? I'm just not clear procedurally the difference. Well, Madam Chair, from my perspective, it, Director Adams' uh, motion doesn't really change the spirit of the motion that staff move forward, so it doesn't change anything from our perspective. And, and if I can speak, uh, Chair, that uh, I, I would assume understanding the the uh, impact that that should this proceed um, would have that it, that because we're approving in principle, it would come back to the board. Uh, with any reports for receipt and then gives us the option of uh, of either changing that or just uh, moving forward. OK, thank you. I, I, have uh, Director uh, Wally. I have Director Wally and Director Lee, if you can please, if you want to speak, can you please put it in chat? Director Wally. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not so sure that I support the motion that's put forward, mainly because the uh, layout that's presented to us now where the road access goes to the race point road and the layout of the subdivision and the water system that's designed and so on. I don't feel comfortable that I actually am supportive of uh, any of those things. And 
perhaps if I see the reports from senior levels of government, uh, maybe it would be a good idea. But in the meantime, I think this is a little bit premature. So I prefer the motion that staff had designed in the first place. So I guess I'd have to vote against it. OK, thank you. Uh, Director Lee, did you have a comment? Um, I would just uh, through the chair to Director Adams would like to ask him if um, even if we do get positive responses from uh, Ministry of Transportation and and the senior government agencies, uh, will this proposal be going to public hearing? And if all if all peoples who's uh, interest in property are affected, including those living in uh, Race Point in Area A, will they have an opportunity to be heard about how they feel about the road access and how they feel about the density of the development or the development character or anything like that? Will they get a chance to have okay, their so say? I, so I've heard, uh, heard the comment and um, uh, refer most of it to staff, but I, I don't think there's any question with the size and scope of this project that uh, a public hearing involving all of the interested parties, whether it be um, First Nations or uh, uh, the Ripple Rock Estates or Ministry of Transportation and Highways and in Infrastructure, um, all of that needs to be considered um, before any I's are dotted or T's are crossed or uh, this board gives final approval. Thank you for the clarification, Director Adams. Director Unger, please. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Chair. I would support this. It's just moving forward a little bit uh, ahead of everything. And, and obviously it's pending the advice of the ministry and all, and all the infrastructure stuff. So hey. I would support it. Thank you. So I have nobody left on the speaker's list for the motion that has been presented. Director Lee. I'd just like to say I'm voting against it only because there's a lot more to a land development proposal of this magnitude than a transportation study and sewer and water. There's a lot more to it than that. And I think I need to be reassured that it's going to go public and that the public in area A their rights to peaceable enjoyment of their property is not going to be affected by this proposal. OK, thank you. OK, seeing no other discussion, I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Director Lee. Wallace, Director Anderson, Director Lee. Lee. Oh, yeah. Director Colburn. Mackenzie. Director McKenzie. Did you get me, Madam Chair, Director Wally? I did, thank you, I have opposed. Director Wally, Director Anderson, Director Colburn, Director McKenzie, Director Lee, for a total of five. Seeing no other opposition, uh, with five opposed, that carries. So, thank you. Um, on to bylaws. Uh, number one, uh, bylaw number 389, which is the home away from home. If I can get somebody to move receipt of the CAO's report, please. Director Colburn, thank you very much. Seconded mm -hmm. by Director Lee and to our CAO, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is just the formal home away from home bylaw with the AAP um, procedure and timeline associated with it and free to answer any questions should the board have any. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Director Anderson. Thank you through the staff. Um, just a, a clarity on individual director communication out to public on this. It, it's quite common that I write um, newsletters and articles out to my community advising them of what's happening here and my um, personal professional opinion would be to say hey look there's this fantastic thing we've been working on for so long um, but i believe i've heard around the table before when this has come up that um, individually and as a corporation we shouldn't be um, either indicating support or lack thereof but rather just sticking to process so if i could have any guidance from from staff i'd be grateful on communications i, I think um director anderson's accurate at this point i think we're I know we're going to go out to AP after this uh, passes through the board and to not show. Uh, I don't think we want to promote it, if you will, but you know, we inform the public and um, 
and we let the public make its decision. So until that AAP is completed, I would say, you know, we're not out there promoting or publicizing it. Okay. Thank you very much. I have nobody else on the speakers list for receipt. I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I'll call receipt carried. On to part B, that the lector response from the attached to the May 25th, 2020 report for the Chief Administrative Officer be approved for the alternate approval process for bylaw number 389. That is moved by Director Unger, seconded by Director Colburn. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I'll call that carried. Then on to part C, that the total number of electors within the area affected by bylaw number 389 be fairly determined as 33,974 for the purpose of the alternate approval process. Moved by Director Kerr, seconded by Director Colburn. Is there any other discussion? Seeing no other discussion, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call that carried. Uh, on to D, that the deadline for submission for electors response in respect to the alternate approval process for bylaw 389 be established as 4.30 p.m. on Monday, July 27th. Uh, moved by... Director Kerr, seconded by Director Unger. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion? I'm being asked by some by people that somebody needs to put them on themselves on mute. Okay. Uh, Mr. Leach, did you have a comment on the last piece? No, seeing none. Okay, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I will call that carried. Thank you, staff. This is uh, really exciting and we look forward to seeing how that turns out. Uh, on to the second bylaw, which is bylaw number 396, Area D water rates. Uh, the report from the CAO moved by Director Lee, seconded by Director Anderson. Thank you very much and to staff, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is just a bylaw to modify the rates in Area D to match the financial plan and the agreement between Campbell River and Area D for the supply of water. Thank you very much. And discussion on receipt? Seeing no discussion on receipt, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I will call receipt carried. On to part B, that bylaw number 396 being the law to amend the rates charged for the use of electoral area D water system be now introduced and read a first time. Moved by Director Moglov, seconded by Director Colburn. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion? Yes, okay. discussion. Okay, thank you, Director um, Lee. I'm opposed to these water rates. Uh, we were told that if Area D reduced their consumption last year over the year before, that we would get a reduction in our rates. And this is actually quite a significant increase uh, to 980 a year from 920 a year. Uh, 350 of these people that are paying these rates are on fixed pensions. And this is more than double what a resident in Campbell River pays for the same water from Area D's watershed. And I think it's totally wrong and actually quite immoral. And uh, it might be legal, but it's not moral. It's not how neighbors treat each other. And I'm not voting in favor of any of these uh, recommendations. Thank you for your input. Is there any other discussion on the second part B? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Uh, Area D. Thank you, Director Lee, opposed? Seeing only one opposed, I'll call that carried. 
On to part C, that the rules be suspended and bylaw number 396 be given second and third readings. That's moved by Director Moglo, seconded by Director Unger. Thank you very much. And discussion? Same comments as before, opposed? Thank you. I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Lee. Director Lee, that's noted. Thank you. Seeing only one in opposition, I'll call that carried. And finally, on to Part D, that the bylaw number 396 being Electoral Area D Water Service Rates and Regulations Bylaw 2018 Amendment Number 2 be reconsidered, finally passed and adopted. Moved by Director Colburn, seconded by Director Moglov. Thank you very much. And discussion? Opposed for the same reasons. Thank you. That's recorded, Director Lee. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those opposed? Lee. Seeing only one in opposition, that carries. Uh, on to correspondence, and I'll entertain a motion for either one or both of the correspondence at this time. Move both. Move both, Director Lee, seconded by Director Unger. Thank you. Is there any, I won't call for discussion at this point because we're moving both. What I will do is call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I'll call the correspondence carried. I have no members reports, no management reports. We have one small piece of business from Director Lee under new business. Director Lee, please. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to inform the board that the uh, Vancouver Island Regional Library System has uh, is, is in the process of finishing developing their emergency reopening plans. And we're starting out uh, with uh, a books, uh, book drop, book pickup, um, takeaway books where you can order your books from the library. They'll put them in a container bag and you can pick them up at the front door. Um, I understand that Campbell Rivers uh, pickup service is starting soon. It's going to be a gradual uh, progress towards reopening the actual book uh, libraries and the stacks. But in the meantime, we're offering uh, a pickup service and uh, we've also expanded our e-library, put in a lot of new programs, uh, including Ancestry.com and uh, Creative Bug and all kinds of things for people to, to pick up online. But in the meantime, we're going to start out with the pickup service. So watch for that. There'll be notices in the paper and there'll be notices sent out to all local governments about which libraries are opening first for the pickup service. So we're moving ahead and uh, we have a plan. So any questions, just direct them to me. Thank you very much. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, Director Davis for uh, in their chat there for continuity for next time. Members reports are usually given to uh, Mr. Yates prior to the agenda being set. So if you can get that in for the next uh, June 24th meeting, that would be fantastic. Sure, um, don't just, worry about that. No problem. Um, just so uh, I can reiterate from what we started uh, at the end of this meeting, I will be calling termination and this meeting will be closed. You'll be asked to sign in to the next meeting. Uh, that uh, Edie has already sent out for you. Um, I am just going to announce that we do not have any more business that falls under the public system and that we will be moving into our next meeting uh, under sections 91C, 91F, 91G, 91J, 91N and 91O of the community charter as they cannot be done in public. At this point, I'm going to call for a motion for termination. So moved. Thank you, Director Lee. Seconded by uh, Director Unger. Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, to, to Mr. Yates, yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I believe the board will need to pass a motion in public in order to hold the closed session. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, I was not I was not aware of that. 
OK, so uh, we will move the CAO report under T for closed session. Director Colburn and Director Unger, thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there any opposition? Seeing none, I'll call that carried. Under Part B, that the meeting be closed to the public and the considerations deemed that fall in the parameters of the subsection 91 C, F, G, J, N, and O of the Community Charter. Moved by Director uh, Unger, seconded by Director Colburn. Is there discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing no opposition, I'll call that carried. And now I will move a uh, termination of the public meeting. Thank you, Director Wally, seconded by Director Colburn. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, I will call that carried. Please log.